Alrighty, here we go. How to do a merit level graph for this level 3 physics experiment of a regular pendulum swinging back and forth where you've already done your length and period data, you've already made your graph, you've already got your square root of L and your average T, and here we go. To do merit level business, you must work out error bars. So, what I noticed before I started talking about this was we have the wrong uncertainty on our length. I thought that was supposed to be plus or minus one centimeter. Notice that is not one centimeter. That is ten centimeters. That's going to make a big difference. We must change this. So, the reason we must use this is each uncertainty on our square root of L, which is on the horizontal axis, we need to find how good these numbers are to go left and right by a certain amount on our error bars. That's all based on our uncertainty on our length of our pendulum, which students in the class that I stole this data from reckoned it was good to the nearest centimeter because they had to estimate to the center of mass. So here we go. This is going to be our horizontal error bar. It will be 0 0.01 divided by L times the square root of L. So we can type that in like this. Now, we need to also take half of this. So we can either divide by 2 oops, divide by 2, or you can multiply by 0.5. The reason we do this last little step is because we're taking the square root, and with uncertainties, any power gets multiplied. Power of square root is 1 half. If we squared, we would need to double. If we cubed, we need to triple. If we cubed root, we'd need to take one third of it, but we're taking the square root, so we need to take 1 half of this. It's a bit convoluted, but that logic you might have notes on. How it looks in Excel, you type in equals, you type in 0 0.01, you divide by the first length, so you have to click on that number. Then you multiply by the first square root of L, so you have to click on that number. And then finally, this is important, you need to divide by 2 because we're taking the square root, and that's the power of the square root. Hit equals, there it is, 0 0.013 drag that down. There should be about six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, because there were six of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's an issue there, only having six dots on a graph, but you should always aim for more than six. Because a few things might not work. But there we go. We have our horizontals. To get our verticals, vertical error bar. These came from the averages of these three numbers here. And how we work this out it's a bit strange, but here we go. This is going to be the maximum of the three numbers that we averaged, minus the minimum of the numbers we averaged. We divide that in half, so it's, the uh, logic is one half of the range. Then we have to divide by 10, and the reason we divide by 10 is because these came from 10 circles. So that's the logic we want to put into Excel. So we have to equals. You need regular brackets, then you need to say maximum, you need another bracket, you need to select the three numbers you want, close that bracket, subtract, minimum, bracket, select the same three numbers, and then close all the brackets. Finally we divide by two, and we must remember to divide by the number of circles, so that we have the uncertainty on a single average t. Drag it down, and there we go. Now I've already set these decimal places, but you could have had to set these decimal places in the same way we set the decimal places above. So now we have our error data to make our error bars. On our graph, how we actually get this is you put your graph next to the numbers that you're going to want to play with. So you can see the numbers you want to play with with this. You probably, before you strap all your error bars on, you should trim your axes. We don't need anything in this graph less than, on the horizontals, 0.35. So you select your axis, you right click, format that axis, oops, I lost it, there it is, right click, format that axis, and you say nothing smaller than 0.35, and you hit close. There we go, nice spread. On the vertical, we don't need anything less than 0.7. So you select, you right click, you format, and you fix that to 0.7. There we go. Look at that. Nice merit level kind of graph looking. Here we come with the error lines, error bars, 
conveyor bars. On the layout, there it is. You basically turn these on. Pick one, any one, does not matter because you're going to change them. There they are. They're not what we want, but they're there. Alrighty. You get the horizontals like that. You right click on the horizontals. You format the error bars. This pops up. You want to customize the bottom one. You want to specify the value. What you want is the ones we calculated. So you click on this little thing here. You drag all these down. You click on that again. You have to do it twice. Once for left and once for right. And there you go. You hit OK and you hit close, and now your error bars on your horizontal are what we calculated. 0.1 divided by L times the square root of L divided by 2. Vertical error bars, select those. Format. This pops up. You want to customize, specify that value. You want to click on that top little box and select the vertical ones we calculated. Do it twice, once for up, once for down. You hit OK, you hit close, and finally we're done. Now we have these little tiny, tiny vertical error bars. So, this is pretty much it. We're ready to print. We've done a lot of things, and how it looks like when we print is we go to File, you hit Print, and you have this kind of thing. You still have the same equation, that hasn't changed. You've trimmed your axes. You've calculated and put on the graph your error bars. You're ready to draw a merit level error line where you want to use about half of your error bars and your error line must cross your line of best fit. Also involved is calculating the gradient of your error line and subtracting that gradient from 2.4. That tells you your uncertainty on this 2.4. This can be used for a merit level conclusion, which, as well as everything you put for the achievement level conclusion, includes what you expected this gradient to be based on the formula that we gave you. Now, this is a little bit tricky because you have to pull out the square root of L, so your gradient is actually going to be 2 pi divided by the square root of g, because that would match with this formula that we have here. So this 2.4, we can calculate what it should have been. And with your error line, we can calculate how good this experimental 2.4 is. Sum all that up, you've got a merit level conclusion. Hopefully that makes sense. For excellence, you might want to just read back over the information on the conical pendulum.